Today's video is sponsored by Typing DNA Focus, an app that can track your mood and improve your productivity based on your typing. So you can type out something like, write a paragraph on the history of Macintosh computers and tell it to get to work writing that for you. And here it goes, it's spitting out a paragraph on the history of Macintosh computers. Hey, it's Chris. Today I'm gonna to be doing a deeper dive into Jarvis, the AI writing app that I've been raving about in lots of videos lately. I've seen the request. I know people are excited to learn more about how to use this beyond just the basics. So this is intended to be more like a primer. It's gonna go beyond just the basics, but it's not yet a masterclass. That might still be coming. But what we're really gonna to do today is dig further into some of the mind blowing ways that Jarvis can skyrocket your productivity. Now, just in case you're unfamiliar, Jarvis is a writing app that uses artificial intelligence to make it easier and faster to create original and creative content. And trust me, if you take a little extra time to really understand this tool, then you can really reap some massive benefits. So stay tuned towards the end of this video when I really kind of explain more about how it works. Right now, I just wanna talk a little bit about how I'm personally using it because there's all kinds of uses. Some people are using Jarvis to write books. Others have used it for blog posts. But think about this. If you use something like Apple Notes or IA Writer or Ulysses, which are dedicated writing apps with great interface markdown support, et cetera, et cetera, you're on your own, right? Unless you hire an editor or a staff member to work with you and to improve your writing. But if you're writing with Jarvis, you have an artificial intelligence kind of backing you up. Basically, it's like having superpowers. You're never gonna get stuck. There's no such thing as writer's block when you're working with Jarvis. It really does feel kind of like an unfair advantage using Jarvis because not everybody has access or knows about it. So Jarvis 101, when I open my Jarvis interface, I get this list of documents. So you can see some stuff I've been working on here lately. My should you upgrade to the iPhone 13 video, my how to start a business with your iPad script. I've been getting some real serious work done inside of Jarvis. Now, if I wanna get started and actually write something, there's some templates that I can access here and you can see they're nicely categorized. You can see everything. You can look at frameworks, just the email-based templates, website stuff, ad stuff, e-commerce stuff, social media, the list goes on. There's a lot of things you can do here and I'm gonna show you some of my favorites. But what I usually end up doing is hitting the long form assistant here and just starting from scratch. And when you do, you get this nice minimal writing interface, no distractions. When I use Jarvis, what I like to do is just get all my thoughts, all my thinking out of my head into the document and then use Jarvis to tweak it, to tune it, to tighten it up and make it better. This is why I say everybody's gonna use it differently. Some people would love to just let Jarvis write for them, but that's not really how I actually use it because I've got a lot of specific knowledge and experience contained in my head. And when I'm trying to share that with somebody, that has to come from me. But I feel like there are times when Jarvis can help me better communicate that information. So right here, you can literally just start typing, okay? Just like you would expect, I can highlight this text and then I can do my just very basic formatting, H1, H2, H3, bold, put it in a list, make it italic. Then I've got a few other options. We're gonna get to those in just a second. And then over on the left-hand side of the document, there's a column where I can add a title. I can put in a content description or a content brief. There's a place where I can specify a tone of voice that I want Jarvis to use when it's helping me craft some content. You can say things like funny or witty or serious. You can even say, I want this to sound like Joe Rogan right? And it studied enough Joe Rogan content that it will do a pretty decent job of mimicking. And then down at the bottom, there's a magic compose button and you can use that to generate some content with Jarvis too, without going through a template. So while this blank canvas is how I prefer to start, I do dip into several of the templates as I'm writing, depending on what it is that I'm creating. So that's called power mode. And if I open that, you'll see my list of templates over on the left. But as you can see, you can really use Jarvis as much or as little as you need to. Now, one of the best Jarvis features is something called boss mode, where you can just write out instructions for Jarvis, and then Jarvis is gonna do whatever you tell it. So you can type out something like, write a paragraph on the history of Macintosh computers and tell it to get to work writing that for you. And here it goes, it's spitting out a paragraph on the history of Macintosh computers. If I like the direction that Jarvis is taking this, I can hit the compose button one more time, 
or I can use the keyboard shortcut, which is Command J. And as you can see, Jarvis will continue typing. I can hit that as many times as I want to, and Jarvis will just keep creating content for me. Now, what's really cool is if I don't like the last thing that Jarvis typed or generated, I can hit Command and Slash, and Jarvis will redo that for me. And again, I can have it redo whatever it's typed for me over and over and over again until I get something that I like. And I don't always like what Jarvis spits out for me, and I'll have it redo it. Takes like no time at all, right? But oftentimes, I feel like what I like the most is that I'll have Jarvis generate something, and that'll actually spark an idea in my own head and give me a direction that I can head creatively or with some information that I didn't necessarily think about in the first place, and in that way, I feel like I end up with more interesting content. Now these Jarvis commands are really cool. If I'm on a Mac or an iPad, by the way, this works great on the iPad. I can double tap control. That brings up my voice dictation. And I can say something like, write an outline for a blog post about Sony cameras. And I will hit command return so that that text will be selected and it will give me an outline for exactly what I asked. I got five bullet points here that I can then use to flesh out an article about some Sony cameras. Another thing I could do is go up to the top of my document and say something like, write an introductory paragraph about Sony cameras and let it execute that command for me, highlights it, gets rid of it, and spits out an introductory paragraph. This stuff can rank for SEO if you are trying to write some blog content, do some content marketing, and importantly, it's plagiarism free. Now, remember when I said you can highlight text and do some formatting and there was some extra features that popped up in that menu too? Let's talk about one of those. I'm gonna select the text that I've got at the top of this article here and I'm gonna hit rephrase. I can click on rephrase and it will give me a different way to word that sentence. And I don't mind telling you, this is one of my most used features within Jarvis. I just rephrase stuff over and over again, again, to spark some ideas for a better angle. Now, if I highlight some text, rephrasing isn't my only option. I can also have this fixed grammar for me, or I can explain it to a fifth grader. And that feature actually comes from a Jarvis template we're gonna explore in a little more depth in just a second. So let me go back here and I'm gonna get into my iPhone 13 should you upgrade guide script. And I've got a paragraph here that maybe seems a little long-winded. And what I wanna do is ask Jarvis to rephrase it and see if it comes out maybe a little bit easier to understand. So I'm gonna take this whole chunk of text, which actually is paragraph length, even though it's a, just a long run on sentence, I guess, and say, explain it to a fifth grader. So here you can see, I went from having about six lines of text to about three lines of text, and it's getting the exact same message across. So let me open up power mode, which slides my script over to the right, brings up my templates over on the left, and let's take a look at the content improver template. I found the content improver template especially useful when I say something really blandly. Maybe it has all the facts, but it's just missing the interest to hook people in. So let's actually take those words that I just said, copy and paste them into the content improver and ask it to generate some AI content. All right, and then a couple seconds later, we have some options, which kind of show up with this light green background. I always like to add some spice and flair when I'm talking, so the content improver has come in handy for me. See, these are words I never would have thought to use, but it kind of keeps things interesting. Another template that I absolutely love is the explain it to a child template, and this is the one that I was talking about earlier that we we're gonna get to when I was talking about being able to rephrase things, fix grammar, or explain it to a child, this is that template. So I've input some text talking about Apple's neural engine for the iPhone 13 into this input text field here because it's kind of a technical topic. That's something that people might want to be able to understand a little bit easier or that I might want to explain a little bit easier. And you even have the option to change the output grade level. So five seems to work really well though. It's like that Reddit forum, right? Eli five, explain it like I'm five. This is that, but instead of having to ask anybody, your AI can just do it for you. So by hitting generate content, I've got some options here. And then what I can do is if I have an option that I really like, I can favorite it or I can copy it to my clipboard. I absolutely love helpful tools and apps that help me be more productive. And that is why I'm super excited about today's sponsor. Typing DNA Focus uses some really cool technology called Typing Biometrics. Basically, it analyzes how you type in order to predict your mood. So it can tell you if you're focused or stressed or tired. And what I like about it is that I can see how I'm feeling throughout the day 
and work when I'm gonna be the most productive. One of my favorite features has to be the analytics where you can see weekly trends, you get a daily activity breakdown, you can see focus levels, and you can also get an immediate analysis of your mood. So just by going about your regular work, you're gonna end up with valuable insights about yourself that you never knew before. I mean, at a very basic level, typing DNA focus can help you understand when you need to take a break and when you should get back to work. It also helps you understand what kind of things impact your mental health throughout the day. And generally, it's just gonna help you get more out of your day. Now it's free to get started to track three different types of moods, focus, stressed, and tired. But if you use the link in the description in the next 72 hours, you can also unlock three additional moods, happy, calm, and energetic. So check it out using the link in the description. Now I wanna share with you what's probably I don't know, it's up there for one of my favorite templates features in Jarvis. I love to use this. It's the feature to benefit template. So for any product out there, you can plug in some features and Jarvis will help you understand what the benefits are or might be. And not just that, it'll tell you the standard benefits, but it'll also try to pull out the emotional benefits so you can better connect with, let's say, your potential customers. So here for the product description, if I drop in, the iPhone 13 Pro has three cameras, a telephoto, a wide, and an ultra wide. That's a great example of talking about some features, but what are the benefits? Well, if you ask Jarvis, some standard benefits include, you can get a close up of something far away, you can take wide shots without losing the subject. And then if I scroll down, I like this emotional benefit that it pulled out. It points out that you can get up close and personal with your subjects, and you can bring home memories that'll last forever. Now, my favorite favorite feature to show off when it comes to Jarvis is probably the creative story feature. I literally have had people over and I bring this out and I make them look at it and see it because number one, it's hilarious. <laughs> it cracks me up. But number two, it's just kind of mind blowing what Jarvis will generate. So the description of this template is write deliciously creative stories to engage your readers. And I would say that is very true. So I'm just gonna put in here, one day my coffee came to life and have that generate some content. All right, listen to this story. I had just taken a sip of my coffee when I heard a sound that made me jump out of my skin. The slurping noise from the man on the next table was not what spooked me, it was his beans and rice cafe au lait mug, which suddenly jumped up to eye level and winked at me. Hey, the mug said in a voice dripping with mischief yet devoid of menace, wanna play? <laughs> What? I mean, this is crazy. Maybe you would use that, maybe you wouldn't, but for me, this always opens up new avenues of thinking, of creativity. One day, Jonathan Morrison met a guy named Austin Evans. <laughs> this is gonna be funny. They found out they both liked tech and had tech-themed YouTube channels. I'm gonna leave the tone of voice witty and we're gonna generate and see what comes up. Austin was an up and coming YouTube star. He had a tech themed YouTube channel with over 200,000 subscribers. <laughs> but he didn't seem to be getting much attention. His videos weren't well produced or engaging enough for his viewers, so they were staying subscribed to him out of habit instead of impressed by the content. Jonathan could see that Austin's video production skills lacked because he was using the time lapse photography, which made it difficult to follow the steps in his short tutorials on how to fix your laptop screen or change your iPad battery. Yeah, I guess that a uh, time-lapse video probably wouldn't be too helpful in that situation. So Jonathan offered Austin some help editing his videos so they can have more compelling storylines with better transitions between scenes. The idea worked really well since at least one person commented, I always learn something. That is obviously not historically accurate, <laughs> but it's pretty funny. Uh, you know, if you're doing some creative storytelling, this can just give you that initial oomph that you need to get going. Sometimes that's the hardest part, just staring at the blank page, right? So there's lots of additional templates. You can do things like create a company bio or a personal bio. There's a real estate listing template, text summarizer, personalized cold emails, video script outline, persuasive bullet points, perfect headline generator, Google ads, Facebook ads, blog post outline, product description, Instagram captions. All right, so I've talked a little bit here about what Jarvis can do, but if you're really gonna use it to its full extent, I think it's helpful to understand how it works. All right, so I'm just gonna open up a plain blank long form document here. Everything is blank. I've got nothing in the title, the content description, tone of voice, etc. Now here's what I need you to know. Jarvis has read something like 10% of everything that's been published on the internet. So it's very smart. It's consumed a lot of information, but it doesn't know everything. And on that same topic, it only knows things up to a certain point. I think it's past 2018 or 2019, it doesn't have any information 
about what has happened in the world past you know, a couple of years ago. So if you ask Jarvis to write about COVID-19 or the iPhone 13, for instance, it probably isn't gonna know a whole lot about those things. On the other hand, it's probably gonna know a lot about the Spanish flu pandemic of 1918, and it'll probably know a lot about the launch of the original iPhone, for instance. So whatever the topic, old or new, it's helpful to kind of give Jarvis a push in the right direction. So give it a title, put in a content description so that Jarvis is informed about either the facts of what you're talking about or some opinions that you have. So let's say I'm gonna write something about AirPods Max. I might give it a title like AirPods Max, expensive, but worth it. And then for the content description, I'm just gonna paste in some information, including the price and just a little bit about them. And now Jarvis is what I would consider locked and loaded. It's ready to start assisting me. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna say, write an intro paragraph. And based on my content description and my title, it's gonna go ahead and give me a nice intro. How did the intro turn out? I don't know, let's read it. This is its first attempt. It is always a good idea to invest in your music and AirPods Max are an excellent way to do that. The sound quality is outstanding. The design is comfortable and these are very easy to use. They also come with a charging case for when you need some extra juice. Not bad so far. I'd change a few things here and there, but it's a good start. Goes on to say the only downside of these earphones might be the price tag. At $549, it can be hard for people who are on a budget or don't have much money to spend on themselves. Now, something to know about Jarvis is that it sees in patterns. So if it detects that you're writing in a format where you put a header and then a paragraph and a header and a paragraph, and then you ask it to compose something for you, well, it might give you a header followed by a paragraph. At the same time, if you've been composing a list, it might continue writing a list for you. So you wanna be really cognizant and aware of the patterns that Jarvis is gonna see. So it kind of looks at the content in your brief or the content above where you're typing in the document and it creates based off of that. So let me just say, summarize the above paragraph. And let's see if we can spit out a nice little summary. Oh yeah, there we go. Just two sentences. AirPods Max are over ear headphones that provide an uncompromising fit and quality sound. They also come with a charging case and the price tag may be too high for some people. Not a bad summary, right? So with boss mode where you can give these commands to Jarvis, that's what I've been using here. You can say stuff like, write me a blog post intro, that's funny. Or give me a few titles for my webinar or answer the question, how much protein should you eat in one day? You can even type out a command like run the content improver on the above sentence or paragraph and Jarvis will understand that and make it happen. Now it's also important to understand a short code, which is three symbols, it's three asterisks. And when you type that, it prevents Jarvis from referencing any of the characters or words or material above those asterisks. And what that's actually good for is breaking patterns. Remember, Jarvis sees in patterns, and if you don't want Jarvis to continue down a path that you're not liking, you can just say, hey, forget everything above this point. Something I wanna point out too is if you're in boss mode, you're giving Jarvis a command, keep it short, keep it sweet, nice and simple. Don't try to over explain to Jarvis what you want to do. So know the templates, you know, by their names, you can reference it, you can open up the power mode there and just say, give me an AIDA about the above paragraph and it will put that framework to work. But don't say, give me an AIDA about the above paragraph and do it like this and, and fill in too many details because that extra information might end up just confusing Jarvis. Although it's improved lately, they keep working on it, but the simpler, the better. Jarvis is powerful. It's a great supplement to a human writer, but it's no replacement for you and your own intelligence. So you need to be able to come in here and fact check Jarvis, right? It's gonna save you some time. You're definitely gonna be able to write, I don't know, two times faster or some incredible amount faster, but Jarvis sometimes spits out inaccurate information. So don't expect to just blow through whatever it is that you're doing without paying attention to what's being said. It's not a tool for lazy people, right? It is there to help whatever it is that you're working on be better. All right, that's it for this video. Thanks for hanging out. I hope you liked it. I can continue making some extra content about this. Maybe I'll talk about it a little bit more in the podcast, so make sure you're subscribed to that. But drop your questions down below. I also talked about Jarvis a little bit in a recent video called Five Ways to Make Six Figures with an iPad. And so if you're interested in business and maybe being entrepreneurial and wondering how you can use Jarvis to maybe start a new career for yourself, uh, then check that video out too. I'll try to link it up down below. Other than that, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Later.